Hello, everybody. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Filecoin and Coindesk for having me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And thank you all for also uh, you know, showing up and, and taking the time to, to hang out. Um, you know, in that background Leah gave, obviously there were a lot of words, some of which you may or may not be familiar with. Um, the high level is we're talking about AI, the ability to utilize certain primitives within Web3 and blockchain in order to make our trust of both the AI and the original kind of creator, developer, whatever, uh, and trust kind of the inputs that they've, they've given into the model. Uh, and so, kind of moving forward, by the numbers, I think all of us are very familiar with how much of a kind of come up deep in has had within the last 16 to 18 months. Um, within that same time period, even dating back, to, you know, about two years since ChatGPT was first released, uh, obviously AI has been kind of on the come up. And within that same realm, AI has dealt with quite a wide variety of skeptics. Uh, you know, I think your your typical layman, laywoman are you know, concerned about the potential for AGI and the replacement of jobs, things of this nature. I think most of us within the audience would probably agree that AI in general has been a huge unlock. Um, and within that, there are also obviously the needs to, it, you know, uh, rather confirm that the AI model itself is independent, is not, you know, being puppeteered, if you will, by someone uh, with, you know, an added advantage or an incentivization. Um, on the other side, we want to be able to see transparency. We want to be able to know what these models, these agents are doing, but we also do not want to compromise the integrity, the, the proprietariness of the model itself. This extensively, the need to verify or compute data without then divulging the sensitive nature of that data is something we encounter every day on blockchain. Right? It was a wonderful idea for us to move into this space and have the transparency and public ledger uh, and, and ability to kind of follow the flow of things. But when we're talking about uh, you know, consumer-facing apps, especially at the social layer, when we're talking about AI on chain, things of this nature, it is paramount that we actually protect the data that is being computed so that the end users uh, in a consumer-facing application or even from an AI perspective are protected. Uh, and so in general, right, we're talking about TEEs, which uh, just a show of hands, how many people in the audience are actually familiar with a trusted execution environment? Perfect. Okay, how many people in the audience have an iPhone? Fantastic. Did you know that there is a trusted execution environment on your iPhone? That is where your, uh, you know, face, uh, oh my gosh, your, uh, your encrypted data for like face ID, things of this nature, are protected within the device itself and separated from the processing kind of components of your actual iPhone. Um, to kind of break it down even more simply, you basically have a server within a server. The server itself, what is called the TEE, is considered a protected environment it always will treat the external server that it's housed within as a malicious, you know, potential malicious intent, and therefore will not divulge that data. But in order to ensure that, you know, we're able to believe, we're able to, you know, have the verifiability, the provability of what is happening with this in, within this environment, we need to then create a certain proof. Uh, and so within this kind of, Somewhat, uh, it's, a, it's an expansive diagram. On the left side, you can obviously see the REE, what is known as a rich execution environment. This is traditionally where you would have computation happen, and it is paralleled with this TEE. The TEE itself has components that are able to reproducibly build uh, environments, whether that's a proof, an application, things of this nature, and then uh, remotely attest that back to uh, a verifier, a challenger, which, you know, and this slide is outside of uh, the actual environment, but here you can see it will basically create this proof, reproducibly build it, and then send it externally to a server, a node that also maintains that same uh, technology. So as it relates to TEEs, you're looking at something like Intel's TDX, Intel's SGX, um, Azure has their own kind of framework. There's many, many out there. But what is very, very unique about Intel's approach is that they've done this at the chip level. This is a hardware guarantee. So within this example, I think it's a little bit easier to break down. 
uh, we're all familiar with domains. Uh, and yesterday I was, you know, uh, had the opportunity to give a talk about trustless name servers. Uh, and for those of you that are aware, basically in a Web2 sense, there's a framework called DNSSEC, which is uh, DNS security extensions, that was introduced uh, about 15 years ago, which basically says that at the root domain and then at the top level domain, there is a public and private key that the domain level above you is basically able to use to decrypt your private key and say that the data that was requested by the user is accurate to what is being returned from the host server, which, you know, for those of you that know, was resolved originally from the DNS name server. This is important because currently, even in the Web2 framework, less than 50, 15, 1, 5 percent of domains globally follow this framework, which means, yes, we're all familiar with spoofing, domain caching, uh, cache poisoning, rather. Um, the opportunity with TEEs in this format, similar to you know, proving the verifiability of an AI agent on chain, you're able to remotely attest at each level of the domains that this is the IP address that is meant to be resolved and returned to the original user. So moving forward as we relate that back to AI, the, the same kind of uh, parameters sit, stay true, right? You want to be able to have an agent that you know is fully independent from the original creator, is not consistently being kind of uh, you know, impacted or uh, you know, pushed into a certain direction. Uh, but you also need the ability to uh, scale it, right? Um, compute is very, very heavy on you know, the, the AI side. The inference can be very, very costly and also you know, require certain uh, elements within the stack. Uh, and I think the last piece, which I had alluded to earlier, really comes down to this guarantee, which currently we have a concern around the centralization of Intel. Because Intel really is the primary producer of this hardware guarantee T chip. Uh, I will say there are some very, very brilliant people. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with kind of the TE space, if you will, Quintus Kilborn uh, over on the Flashbots team is really pioneering starting to decentralize and create a distributed hardware network that will allow this to be no longer a single point of failure. Um, ultimately, we're still, you know, I think months, not years, not even you know, six months away from this being a reality, but TEEs are becoming a very, very hot button topic. Uh, and it's the, I think the most important thing to realize is it's not for one particular use case. Suddenly, this technology that's been around for some time, I mean, the point that is, it is you know, distributed across all of our cell phones is pretty, uh, pretty much a testament to this. But from the consumer layer, from you know, even what uh, Hippocrat was just saying a lot of stuff in you know the more enterprise and uh, you know higher level data requirements. TEs have a lot of value to add to both the creators, the you know developers, the, the founders, but also the end users to be able to have an attestation that you can trust and look back at you know this hardware guarantee that says this is what happened within this secure enclave. None of the data was actually divulged, but you can look at this proof that says this computation happened, the output is trustful, and you can you know, rely on this agent, you can rely on you know, this processing of data at the consumer level, you can even you know, rely on Hippocrat or something similar to process your data securely. Um, and so obviously, Representing Fleek, we have been pioneering this for almost two months now, uh, working very, very closely with other uh, you know, peers within the space like Fala, Automata, Flashbots, uh, and extensively. And I think the most important aspect of this is that it needs to run on an underlying network that supports the needs of the framework. Uh, and so that means having long-running servers. Uh, this means also having a cost-effective approach to be able to optimize the delivery of data and things like that. Uh, and then finally, you know, obviously being here at uh, you know, FIL Bangkok, that means you also need to have resilient storage at the under, underlying layer as well, which is why you know, we're thankful for you know, teams and, and organizations like Filecoin. Um, we are currently in early access, uh, and I hate to shill, but you know, gotta do it. Uh, feel free to scan this QR code if you'd like to chat. We're still very, very early, which is honestly arguably the most fun time to, to kind of get on board. It's when there's the biggest opportunity to kind of impact and drive you know, the direction of the roadmap, but also create that very, very tight feedback loop. 
Um, that is really my, uh, my overview of TEs. Um, I don't know, we're not doing Q&A, are we? Um, okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys for having me. Um, I'll be kind of by the side for questions afterwards, but yeah, have a wonderful rest of your day.